I'm listening to an audiobook at the moment. Um, this is a self-help book. And if you're wondering what all the piles of shit behind me are, it's because I'm super into self-help and I'm uh, rereading The Magic Art of Tidying because I seem to be the only um, student of Maria Kondo who uh, didn't successfully tidy their lives and seems to still be tidying. But that's probably down to my incompetence. Anyway, I'm shaming, which is segue. I'm listening to an audiobook about shame by Brené Brown. And it made me think a lot about, made me think a lot about how much I look like somebody else in the viewfinder. So that's an existential crisis I didn't need. Um, it made me think about shame and reading because basically she talks about the idea of when you realise that something has gone wrong for you or around you, you either respond with guilt or shame, which sound like the same thing, but actually they're very different. So for instance, um, when you spill something on a carpet, um, a shame response, a guilt response would be, um, oh, I spilled that on the carpet. That was a stupid thing for me to do. Um, or like, oh, that was that was careless of me. Um, or I that was a stupid action. And then shame is, I spilled that on the carpet. I am so stupid. I am worth nothing. Um, and it's that like hypothesis of like, I did this, therefore I am this. Rather than like the depersonalization of it, like your actions are sometimes just your actions or they're accidents. They're not like a reflection of this deep seated thing in you. And it made me think about shaming and books. So not only is there this whole like counting books thing, especially on the internet and on, on Goodreads, and I get completely caught up in it sometimes. And I'm like, I've read 30 books this year, must be a genius. And like us seeing a success in how many books we consume, which is to do with like speed and achievement. She also says that in our society, um, exhaustion is a badge of honor um, and being exhausted and exhausting yourself um, is is an antidote sub subliminally for us being afraid to look lazy or to look slow. Um, and I think that that's why sometimes I will read a really fast book so I can get my count on Goodreads to like 30, even though my Goodreads thing is private and that's a whole other story. But like I, like me and about 10 people can see my Goodreads thing, but I'm like, I've read 30 books this year. I'm a genius. Now I'm going to read 31 and I'm going to be mastermind. But then the thing that made me think most about was um, reviewing books and how we review books because like, so write a book, right? It's to entertain um, or to inform. I think they're the two things that it's doing. So if you're not entertained by something, if you're not either in on the joke or in on the fantasy and it's not something that you want to imagine happening, like a romance, or because you that's just not something you want to imagine, or um, you're not in on the joke and you don't find a, a book funny, or a, a book is there to inform and help you understand something, um, whether that's a character or a perspective or a civilization structure or a scientific theory or a psychological practice or oh, I've run out of things you can learn in books but so reviewing books is very weird because we very rarely want to review a book in relation to us so when we realize that a book isn't something we'd enjoyed and it wasn't good in our eyes we either default to being like oh I read this book and I didn't like it or I read this book and I didn't like it, there's something wrong with me or there's something wrong with them. And that's the shame reaction rather than the um, guilt reaction. So for the shame reaction, we either push it on us and think, I wasn't smart enough to understand that book. I was too ignorant to understand that book. I didn't have the attention span to understand that book or that person's perspective. I didn't care enough, um, therefore, I'm a bad person, that book has made me feel bad. And it means that it will stop us from either picking up another book similar to it, or we'll go on to the next stage of fun shame times and we think there's something wrong with that author. Um, and that is so hard because I review books badly sometimes, but I try and unpack why. And I think that I am going to try more consciously to include myself in the review because there's literally no other way to do it. These past however many years working in publishing uh, is like so weird because often I will read a book and not like it and then meet the author, really like them, and then just wish I'd like the book. Um, or I will love the book and meet the author and hate the author and then their stories they'll never see the light of day. And also the author's relationship to their work is as tenuous sometimes as your relationship to their work.
Does that make any sense? Sometimes we want a, a book to play a role in our lives and then it doesn't play that role in our lives or it isn't intelligent enough for us and our learning level, so we discard it. But if I had more shame in my life, I would apologise for that. And then we make a review that says, this book is stupid, it's too simple, um, which is what I hear around some YA sometimes. I hear it about some adult fiction books that people don't think is on their level. Um, and then other people will hear that review and go, oh, I like that book. That must be, that must mean that I'm stupid. And I see that with like voting rhetoric a lot at the moment where people are like, people made that decision. I don't feel good about the outcome of that voting decision. So I either feel guilt for not doing enough and maybe not relating to the people around me. You feel guilty about the shock of not being able to predict what the other humans around you were thinking in other parts of the country. And then you project that into shame. And it's not shame on you, it's shame on other people. And going, oh, those people didn't make the decision I would make, shame on them, rather than something other, something else, some other kind of response that might be a little bit, a little bit better, a little bit better. So the point is that guilt is something that will help you along. So maybe like, oh, I really wanted to read that book and I didn't get around to it. And that's a rubbish thing to do because that is something I should prioritize because I really care about reading that book and the issue in it. Um, or I didn't like that book. Maybe I don't understand enough of that perspective or maybe I don't remember what it's like to not know those things or to not understand those things. And those books are for people that are a, a different part of the world life cycle or the stage of their life to me and that's fine but the shame reaction is I hated this book this book shouldn't exist I don't understand why this book needs to be here because it's not something I enjoyed now it's different from saying there's something like harmful in a book because I understand that is like that needs to be said if somebody thinks something's harmful in a book but if it's you just don't think it's very well done um the the implications of that and I know that I've done this in reviews before, is that the author, who is a real person and is out there, will feel shamed into not creating or improving themselves because you've put shame in their court, um, which is debilitating. In the same way that if you tell somebody that they're fat, they're very likely to then go, oh, you're right, I'll go to the gym. They're more likely to go and comfy because you've made them feel shame. There's certain commercial fiction books that everyone's like, and if stupid people read those books, like, fuck that mentality, man. 